Hello guys, Cyprian here from AFA for All, and today I'll show you a new tutorial about thermal analysis. So I've been requested this tutorial from several uh, person. Uh, if I remember, David from US, and uh, and I had a lot of engineers wanted to see how in Salmon Mecca you do simple thermal analysis, and how do you take this thermal analysis results and put that on the mechanical. Uh, model. So that's what I'll show you. So the model I'm showing you here is actually an axisymmetric model. So we will we'll do from one stone we will kill two birds. I'll show you both how to how to do a thermal analysis and how to do axisymmetric thermal analysis. So you learn two things at the same time. Uh, so this is the first model I'll show you, and then we'll see in the second time how to uh, how to take those results and apply them onto another mesh set uh, which is a mechanical mesh set and where you will be able to view the displacement and the stresses so uh, this will be very uh, interesting tutorial uh, before I start with uh, the practical step-by-step step step thing um, let me show you where you can actually find more detail about um, tutorial and training on the Codaster website uh, that might be very useful for you so if you go on codaster.org, uh, you will find a section called training. So just click on that and wait that uh, it loads and go to... So you see that you have several sections here on the left. Uh, it's not very obvious that you have to click on that uh, and then you'll see categories appearing here. Uh, and in each of those categories, you'll have details about how to do, uh, I don't know, uh, now we are, we are talking about thermal, so here is the thermal power point. So as usual, those presentations are not meant for humans. Uh, but anyway, this will give you some indication to, to do some kind of things. Uh, once you understand the basic, like I show you how to do it, after that you can come back to the po this power point and say, oh, so this, this, was, uh, this meant actually that. Okay, and then you will understand uh, the content of this PowerPoint. So, without waiting, uh, let's go back to Salamica 2018 and let's just close all that and start from a new project. And let's, let's make a new model from that. So, now that I have a new project opened, um, let's go to the geometry and let's create first my geometry for my my uh, model. So it is an axisymmetric tube. Uh, so what I'll do is a simple I'll design a simple plate, uh, and it will look like I will simulate just a plate, but actually I'm simulating uh, some portion of a tube because in when it solves that, uh, it automatically rotates it around a, a certain axis of symmetry that's that's what what is called uh, axis symmetric analysis so let's just start with the plate so let's create a rectangular shape plates and let's put a width of 70 or maybe the opposite 70 like that 100 width okay apply and close and then I have to move that uh, somewhere around this area so let's just go into operation and translation and let's move it um, 300 let's say in the X direction and I think 50 in the Y direction and then it should go here um, and I'll just move this plate so I will uncheck create a copy so I successfully moved my plate. Okay, now that I have that, I need to create uh, the groups that will be used for uh, the simulation. Um, so let's go here and groups, create groups. So I'll have uh, four edge groups and one face group. Um, and I'll, so this, this edge is close to the X minimum, so let's just call it X min. X min, right? And this one 
uh, let's call it x max. You can you can obviously call them as you want. Um, I found that by calling them like that, it was easier to uh, see mentally where those h were. Okay, I think I called it max. Okay, yeah. Uh, actually, I wanted to call it min. So let's just change the name. Okay, sorry about that. So, and this one is Y max. And now the last is the surface of the plate. Uh, let's call it, let's call it surface. Won't be original on this one. Okay, so now my uh, geometry is uh, created and I will, um, I will go to the meshing part of it. So let's get into the mesh module and let's go and let's let's create a mesh like this. So for that I will use a quadrangle mapping and I will use wire discretization. And I will give it a uh, local length of, let's say, 5. Let's see what I, I'm getting like that. Let's compute this. OK. So now I meshed my plate. Now let's say that I want um, to be sure that this area will, will have more accurate results. So I'll, I will mesh more closely this area than that. So I will use arithmetic progression on this. So to do that, you have to add a sub mesh on this mesh. Uh, this will be 1D mesh. And for that, you have to select um, so Y min and Y max geometries give them a wire discretization and here you have arithmetic progression and now you can specify that you want it to go from 1 to 5 so you can compute the sub mesh and then compute the main mesh and then you will have your mesh ready so now the mesh is ready, but we still need to create the mesh groups, right? So we have the geometry groups ready. So just go into create groups from geometry, select those groups here, and they will appear into your mesh. So now we are finished with the, the creation of the geometry and the mesh. So we can go to the code aster part. Well, I will show you how to apply boundary conditions and temperature and all that. So let's go to Colastar module. So the first thing to do is uh, the same than usual. Uh, let's create a stage and let's read our mesh. So as I already created the mesh into the mesh module, it will appear here. Click on OK and I have it in. Now we, I'll create a model for that um, and in the model I'll have to define it as axis symmetric. So this is thermic model and everywhere and now you have a few choices so here choose axis. So by default, um, I think the axis of, sim of uh, symmetry is the y axis. So that's why I put my plate in this direction. So um, if you put it in the other direction in Z, 
you might have some problems so don't forget about this this is quite important um, okay now th now that I did that I'll have to define a material and as this is pure thermal analysis uh, I don't need to define a linear isotropic uh, material for the moment um, so I can define I can define the thermal property so let's find where is the thermal type of material so maybe I can just search thermal so there is something called let's okay oh there this is the one so this is in this model you see that you have actually only one coefficient which is lambda and you have also rho cp um, that you can use so if we look at the power points um, it's kind of explained I think uh, here what those coefficients represent so let me check yep so this is lambda the thermal conductivity and this is rho cp the heat capacity so that's the two kind of material that you define so and in um, if you are linear isotropic type of analysis you only need this there if you are li linear isotropic you use this one and if you have non-linear then you use this okay so you need to define those two uh, parameters and for my analysis actually I don't even need the rho cp I just need the lambda and I'll just put it six like in the example okay now let's assign this material to my mesh so let's choose model everywhere okay so now I I send the material to the mesh now let's define the loading so loading uh, is defined into this uh, thermal load assign a thermal load and you have several types of uh, thermal load so the one I'll use here is uh, the most simple one is temp impo so it's kind of enforced temperature so it's imposed temperature so I will I will use it to, to uh, impose a temperature on both edges um, of this plate so let's choose the X-men the X-men edge and let's define it as 15 degree and let's add another one and this will be the X max let's define it as 40 degree okay now I have my load and now the model is ready to um, to put into an analysis and for that I use the linear thermal analysis so it's the command called third linear yeah so linear thermal um, and okay model let's keep this name let's define the load and I think that's it um, and now I just need to imp the results so let's imp imprint set the output result yep, like that uh, and let's put it let's go it I don't know uh, you see I already have a lot axi dot rmed you can call it as you want and you have to choose the rmed extension and let's not forget to check the results here so the results will be attached to our uh, output file and the result to choose here is raster third linear okay so now uh, the basic settings for the analysis uh, is okay uh, let's go in the history view and let's add the stage and run the analysis and I hope I'll get green if everything is fine okay so now I'm getting green which means that uh, my analysis is completed uh, so I have to go in data file 
and click on this exit rare med and then right click open in Paravis and this will open the Paravis module here and directly load this into uh, the results post processing. So you see that my result file directly appear here. And now I'm able to view the temperature results. Uh, and let's display the mesh with the edges. Uh, so that's it. That's the static uh, result of this basic analysis. Uh, so don't forget, it looks like a 2D analysis. Uh, well, it is a 2D analysis, technically. But it's an axisymmetric analysis. So what I am analyz analyzing actually is uh, cylinder. So um, a cylinder in rotation around the y, y axis. Okay, now now that we got that, let's go to the next step. Before showing you uh, that, let me show you one additional thing uh, that you probably will need. Um, right now, I'll show you only how to get one type of result, which is a temperature result. But let's say you also want to see uh, the gradient of temperature. So let me see how you do that. You add your in between this analysis and output, you, you add a calc um, This calc should have the same name than the, the analysis. So I have to call it raster, like this. Um, and in this calculation, basically, I need to say, I need to attach some kind of thermic results here. Uh, and I will give him, those Those are the kind of type of thermal uh, results that you can, you can have. If you want the flux in element ghost point, you add this one. If you want to have the flux in the element node, you add this one. And if you want to have uh, at the nodes uh, themselves, then you add the third one. You click on that, and now you are, uh, if I launch again the analysis, which I will, let's try, I launch again the analysis, let's have a look at my results now. And previously I had only one type of result, and now I'm getting the, the flux at the node. Um, so it looks a bit the same, but it's actually uh, different. And in this menu you only you only get the flux at the node. If you want to, to see the flux at the ghost point or at the element node, then you will have to, I guess, add the filter probably in uh, mechanics, like for ELGA points, you, you need to add this kind of filter, ELGA field to surface, for example. Apply, and now I'm able to see the flux at uh, element ghost points, and you do the same, a filter at uh, ELNO filter, and then you will, you will see the flux at, uh, at element center. Okay, that's it for this uh, this part. Let's go back now and let's try to see for good how I can um, use my new created mesh uh, in this model. So let's go back to my um, mesh module. And what I'll do is that I will create a new mesh set. So here, this is the mesh that I use for thermal analysis. And this is a first order uh, quad type of elements. However, for mechanical analysis, it's better to have second order elements. So I want to do the mechanical analysis uh, that will receive this temperature field as input. Uh, I want this on a new mesh set, which may have different kind of uh, node distribution and which will be second order. So how do I do that? Well, first of thing is to create a new mesh set. So uh, let's open, 
Let's load again my geometry. Let's create this new mesh set here. Uh, this will be mesh 2. Select like this. Uh, I will use quadrangle mapping again in wire discretization. Uh, local lens will be 5. Okay. And let's just compute that. Okay, so this is uh, another mesh, uh, and this is first order too. So how do I get that second order? Well, there is an option in uh, the tools here. Uh, let me check. Modification. So you can modify the mesh sets, uh, and you can, I think there is an option to, to okay, so to put that into convert to from quadratic. Yeah, that's it. So here's my mesh set and let's convert it to quadratic. Okay, so it looks like it did nothing, but actually uh, it did more than, uh, than that. And if you want to see what it did is you have to right click here and display the nodes. And okay, let's hide the geometry. Okay, where is my mesh set? Kind of disappear. Okay, I don't know why it disappeared. Maybe it's a bug. Well, uh, use you are supposed to be able to look at the notes here, uh, but in this case, when you choose this option, it just disappears. So that's probably a bug. Um, Developers, if you're looking at this video, please take a look at this. Uh, okay, so anyway, uh, what I wanted to show you is that if you're able to see, look at the nodes, you will see that you'll have uh, one, two, three, four nodes, plus you will have one node at the middle of those edges will, uh, which will appear. So you have now quadratic type of elements, you have a mid node that have been added. So we don't see it now here because of this bug, but anyway, uh, that will probably be corrected in the next version. So, and I think on the Windows version uh, it works because uh, I was trying and I was able to see this mid node. But anyway, uh, okay, so ne next thing is don't forget to add again the group that I created on the, from before. So use again the same function, create group from geometry. Okay, add that. Uh, okay, I have the group, I have my new mesh set. Let's go again into code aster and let's, uh, let's try to, to use my new mechanical mesh set and find a way to transport the temperature field to this new mesh set. So the first thing I'll do is that I'll add a new stage. So I kind of separate what I did in the first step with the second step, and I can run separately the stage one and stage two. So that's very useful to do that. Um, third thing to do is to read my new mesh like I did with this one. So I'll just uh, read a mesh. And this time I choose the mesh two. Let's, let's give it uh, a name which uh, is meaningful, let's call it Mecha Mesh. So this will be the mesh for Mecha. Uh, and now I'm creating a new uh, fine element model for this mesh set here, um, which is second order uh, uh, mesh. Uh, so I check finite element, I check the right mesh set, don't forget to check that. And everywhere this will be mechanic and we are still in axis symmetric model so I will still use axis type of model so I'm getting the same uh, model so let me check now it's it's in red I don't know why uh, sometimes sometimes it's because you forgot forgot something well, in my case, I think I didn't forget anything. 
well I don't know why it becomes red sometimes it's just become red like that without any uh, reason so again if you're a developer of this please have a look at, at this part okay but anyway in in all case I think it should be okay it shouldn't disturb uh, analysis uh, so let's just um, let's just do now the projection so now that I have my previous mesh and its associated model uh, okay I know I know what's wrong uh, I understood I choose the same name for this which is not uh, so it has a conflict with the previous model that's why okay um, so sorry uh, if you're a developer sorry about that <laughs> my bad okay so let's give it another name th mod uh, this is not this is mecha mecha mod so let's call it mecha mod okay mecha mod okay now it's not red it's uh, black again wonderful so yes indeed my bad um it's important to be able to recognize when you are <laughs> you are wrong and it's not always the software right most of the time it's it's yourself uh, anyway let's go into uh, doing the projection so there is somewhere uh, projection function so I'm not I'm not really sure where it is okay well it's it's here proj champ so that's the one which will help me to project my uh, my field on the other one and basically what it does is that it takes the result of my first analysis and then I'm able to to project either a model of uh, a model or a mesh onto a new model so that's what I'll do I use the first result uh, and and here again don't forget to give it a meaningful name so let's call that res proj okay like projection of uh, of the rester because this was the name of my previous uh, raster projection okay now I successfully projected well I think it's successful let's save that to make sure uh, it's it's saved um, and just to test if it works let's go just go back here let's try to run this and you see that I already computed this so uh, I'm not I don't have to compute that again. Uh, it's display in blue, which means it will use the result from the previous analysis. So it will only complete, uh, it will only uh, compute the result from my new stage. So that's quite a useful feature. So let's try to run that. And if I did all everything okay, it should be displayed in green. Wonderful, it works. So you see that it took the result from the previous analysis and you have a small link which is created with the second stage. So now I'm ready to, to go for third stage, um, which, will, which will be the mechanic anal mechanical analysis. So let's add this third stage. Um, and what I'll do in the third stage is that, well, first of all, I redefine a new model, right? Um, but I have a small, I have a small uh, problem. Well, it's not really a problem, but uh, I have, um, I have a small difference with the previous model. The previous model was only a thermal model. So if you look at the material, it has only uh, uh, thermal properties. It doesn't have mechanical properties. So I could in this material here uh, define directly the mechanical properties um, and then it will be okay in, in this stage or I can create a new material so let's let's do that let's create a new material which will be the mechanical material uh, so define a new material 
uh, let's let's give it a name. Let's call it steel. Right? This will be a steel material. And this time I'm giving him. Uh, I'm giving it uh, some mechanical properties. So the young Young's models here will be. Uh, so let me think. Uh, don't make sure that your units are correct. So in this case, um, I think I define this analysis in millimeter. Um, so so the Young's model should be in millimeter too. So if it's in millimeter, I think it sh should be around this value. So in case I'm wrong on that, well, make sure you, you get the right value. If it was a meter, I don't remember what I did. But it should have like 2 and 2.1, 10 power 11. In case of millimeter, it should be in Newton by uh, millimeter square. Uh, or MPA, so that's that's the value. Okay, so that's that's what I need. I don't need to define a density here. Oh yeah, but I need something else additional. I almost forgot about it, which is the thermal expansion coefficient. This is very important. Uh, so if I show you the name, this is called alpha coefficient. So this is what links the thermal results with uh, with the thermal kind of deformation. So this is very important. You need to have this additionally in your material so it can compute uh, the deformation due to temperature. So don't forget to define this one. Uh, and I'll take, let's say, 1.2 minus, uh, minus 5. Now that I did uh, define this new steel material, I have to assign it like I do usually to my make mode. So assign the material to my. Um, so let's let's give it a name. Um, let's let's call it field uh, make a make a field make sure uh, or make a feel because it's limited to eight characters uh, and let's assign that to my make a mode um, and here usually we uh, we just I just add the material like this um, steel um, but in this case there will be an, an additional option I will need to well, let me check this. So now all the trick to assign the thermal tem temperature field calculated previously is, is here. And in this mechanical model, you have this AFI uh, VA, VARC. So this is what tells um, the software to assign a field uh, previously calculated. So you can check the documentation about this. Uh, if you're interested about what this does. And here we'll define my temperature field. Uh, and, and here I need to give it a reference value, which is uh, 20 degrees Celsius. And I need to uh, basically tell it it will be defined on all the model and I need to give it uh, I think this one no I, t I need to give him um, the evil and here I should have um, the previously defined rest proj so I'm not totally sure why I don't get it here. So maybe I should use something else. Um, I think the name is 
name is temp this is correct in here I don't know why I don't get the rest proj uh, field projection okay so I cut briefly the video and let me tell you what I did to to change that so first of all I opened rest proj and I forgot to add this option projection yes so don't forget this one uh, and then what I did was simply to close the interface and to open it again and and then in this Mika field um, now I'm able to see this rest proj, proj show so must be a bug must be some kind of uh, problem with the interface uh, if it doesn't appear here just do what I did save your project close Salome Mika open it again and it should appear okay so now now I assigned my um, my new steel I created my new steel material I assigned my material to uh, my previous uh, new mechanical model that I created now I need to assign the boundary condition to my plate um, so let's go into BC loading and assign the mechanical uh, conditions so let's go into uh, so to make sure uh, let's change the name of the loads call it M load like mechanical load to make sure this is unique um, and then this is on oh, this one DDL impo so the, the name is enforce DOF right uh, and this is the one I'm using to constrain my plate so what I'll do is that I'll take the Y mean element group that I created previously which is the bottom one um, and let's just fix that one uh, into dx and dy direction and that's all that will be the only boundary condition that will apply let's show you that if I have I will not apply a force or a pressure or something so if I get a deformation that will be due to the temperature field and the expansion coefficient that I defined previously um, that's it so now that I do that I need to define again the linear uh, sorry no the static mechanical analysis which will take my this one make a feel the take the right material choose the right mechanical model as well to make sure you have both choose the mechanical load okay so this one is called wrestling uh, let's add the stresses as well because a lot of people ask asking me how do you add the stresses so that's how you go into a calc show you give it the same name as wrestling uh, and so this is basically it result Oh, sorry. So, calculation. Then, I know why it uh, it's called thermic. Um, oh, that's why. I have to select the right type of analysis. Mika static. Yeah, you select result Mika static, and now you'll you'll see, um, you'll see the so this is the stress contraint in French means stress. So let's add that. Let's add sigma elga, sigma elno, sigma nu. So it means stress at uh, ghost element ghost point, stress at element center node, stress at element nodes. Uh, yeah that's it and if you want to see the formulas type of stress then you have to add criteria in this you will have to hit this one the sick elga 
sick l no and sick no okay don't forget to give the same name to both okay and now we are ready to set our input file to so let's call that Mika res like Mika result and give it the unit Armed. And don't forget to attach the right results which are wrestling results. And now I hope this will work. So now I calculated this two stages so Ah, I forgot. Uh, in the second stage, I forgot to check that reusable. So now I'm, I have to recalculate those two stages. If you want this to be, uh, if you want to be able to recalculate only the last one, you have to check that reusable. Okay, let's try. Hope this will work. So now it's re recalculating the stage two and the stage three. Oh, I have a problem. Okay, so let's see what is this problem. Error with the second reading of file. No save object will be recovered. Okay, well, probably I think it kind of it couldn't find out the the first. I don't know. Probably another bug. So let's calculate everything. Okay, now it works. So you see, sometimes it's, it doesn't work, you don't know why. Okay, hope this last stage... Oh, shoot. I'm not getting green for the last stage, so let's check what is happening here. What is happening? Okay. I don't know what is happening. You define a load with Afe Karmika on the type thermic model. This is not possible. Ah, okay. I think on the load definition, I I define it with the wrong model. So that's that's possible. Let's go into BC load. Oh yeah. Hey, I forgot that. You have to go down here and change it to your mechanical model. Now I defined the, the mechanical load on the thermal model, so that's why it's giving me some errors. Uh, okay. Now let's recalculate just the last stage. So you see, it takes some patience to get things working. Hoping this time it will work. Oh yeah, it works. Wonderful. And now I'm able to go open the mechanical results here. And let's hope that everything is fine. Okay, so I have displacement. So this is the displacement. So it seems to be working. So I have the displacement. Let's generate the, the deform shape. So I have to check that. Generate vectors, apply, and then define a filter. Uh, warp by vector. And now you don't see it very much, but this is because my scale factor is too small. Let's put a scale factor of 5. Uh, 5 is too small to 50. Okay, now we start to see some kind of deformation uh, because it's very small thermal deformation, so we don't see much of it. Um, and now let's look at the stresses. So this is von Mises, and this is. 
this is um, sigma s x x x y y and s z z at the node okay so that's all for this video um, I guess that the next step will be to see how you can set up um, this kind of analysis but with uh, like a time distribution of temperature change. So this is possible too. So now I did a static thermal analysis. You could couple that with a, a transient thermal analysis where I would have changing temperature uh, according to time and then mechanical uh, change transient mechanical analysis according to time so that's a bit more difficult to set up uh, but again you will have those information how to set that into the the powerpoint uh, which is available on uh, the codaster website that i showed you at the beginning of the video um so thank you very much for for watching this video i hope you learned a lot from that and uh, if you have questions remaining uh, or things you don't understand, don't hesitate to leave a comment in, uh, in this video or on the blog. Uh, anything that goes to your mind that you'd like to simulate that and you don't know how, just let me know and I'll see how to, how to do it and I'll prepare a video for you next time on YouTube. So thank you again for watching and see you in the next video. So if you're on YouTube, you'll probably find the link to the article and the next videos inside the description. Otherwise, you can go on my blog, fea4all.com, uh, and click in the category open source FEA and you'll find all the articles I wrote about uh, open source FEA and the previous videos inside this category. So thank you for watching. I hope that you learned a lot and that you will learn a lot using all the videos that I am sharing on my blog. So if you like those videos, please help me to share them with your friends and other engineers. And also, please let me know what you think in the comments. It's always great to have some kind of feedback. And if you have some ideas of things you would like to learn or do with FEA, please also let me know. Thank you for watching again.